Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my WordPress news theme tutorial, where I will show you exactly how to create this thing you see right here on your screen. The tutorial that preceded this was the one where I created this featured content slider that you see right here on the screen. And I provide a link to that as well as part three of the news theme. And if this is a little bit more and you want to take a bite out of right now, I also provide a link back to a more basic theme tutorial that you should definitely understand before you try to make something this crazy. First thing you're going to want to do is I always use what's called the blank WordPress theme and you can find it right here. I provide a link underneath of this video if you want to go get this guy and you don't have it. And it literally is a blank theme. If you install it, this is what it actually looks like. It looks kind of messy. Basically what it is is all the CSS, everything is stripped out of it. It's just the most basic theme that you can possibly use. After you download the blank theme, what I always do is I come in here and I go duplicate and then I'm going to give this a brand new name. I'm going to call it NTT News Theme. Two. And you can see that it popped in right down here. Okay, now I'm gonna start opening some of those files up and jump into the code. So, what we're gonna do is open up some of the files we're gonna be playing with in this part of the tutorial. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. All right, so here's themes, and then I'm gonna look for NTT News Theme 2, and then I'm gonna open up specifically functions.php, header.php, and index.php. So, click open. First place we're gonna be messing with is the header section. And in part three of this tutorial series, we actually created this straight HTML CSS information that you see here. And what I got to do is actually transfer that, which is on the right side of the screen, over to the left side of the screen. Sounds like a lot of work, but it really isn't. So this is from a blank theme. And believe it or not, you don't really have to change that much up here, even though there's all this stuff. We're going to handle that later on. We're going to scroll down here until you see style sheet underscore URL with blog info in front of it. And if you can't see what I'm typing here, just watch this in high def and full screen. You'll be able to see everything. Now, blog info, this guy right here, what this is going to do is it's going to pull over the style sheet for you. Well, I actually have two style sheets, one being the regular style sheet, and then I have a second one called home.css. Well, what I got to do instead, I'm still going to use all this information here, except inside of blog info, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in template underscore directory. What that's going to do is that's going to say that I want blog info to return the location for my template directory inside of WordPress. And then what I want to do is just forward slash CSS forward slash home dot CSS. And that's the location for where that style sheet is eventually going to go. Then if we look over here under div ID page wrapper, well over here it says page wrap. So what do I got to do? I just got to come in here and type in page wrapper. Remember, this is this straight HTML CSS on the right side of the screen. This is the theme we're working with on the left side of the screen. Header over here is an ID over here. It's also a div with an ID, so I don't need to change any of that. Here's an H1 tag with an ID of blog title. Well, I'm just going to copy that from on the right side of the screen. Paste that inside of there. I can leave everything else the same. And blog info name, what that's going to do is it's actually going to return the name for my website. So here, new think tank. And then this is the slogan part or the description as WordPress calls it. So I got to pull in those two different things. And also I have to pull in a search tool that I want to use, even though it's not showing here, it is showing right here. And if you want to see what this theme looks like in real life, if you go to myinvestmentservices.com, I have a dummy site set up there and you can look at this. It's all junk articles and really nothing inside of it. But either way, that's something you can look at if you want to see what that looks like. All right. So I got blog title inside of here. Everything else is exactly the same. And we come over here and we see paragraph ID blog slogan. Over here it's listed as a class. Well, I want to change it to a paragraph instead. So again, I'm just going to copy this over here. And that's what a lot of this is. You put a lot of the work into the HTML and the CSS and then everything else goes nice and smooth. I'm going to close off this paragraph down inside of here. And then I want to pull in or create that little search box that I showed you before. So I'm just going to highlight this, copy it. This is going to automatically pop in a dynamic search form. As you can see, it's called Get Search Form. And it's just going to stick it right there on the screen. And then another thing I want to use is a menu system at the top of the screen. Well, this is pretty much copy and paste every single time. It's going to be the, pretty much the same all the time. If you want a standard WordPress menu to show up on your screen, just put in exactly what I have here. Array, Tab, and then I'm going to type in Theme, Location. And there's a link to all this code in the underbar. And I always do this the same way. Just type in theme location, menu, underscore class, app, drop down, comma, container ID, navigation, 
fall back. CB, this is basically the function it's going to be called if the menu fails, and it's just going to put up a junk sort of menu. Like I said, this is going to be copy and paste code. Pretty much do the same thing every time. And we're going to close that off. Jump down here and close off the PHP section. And header's done. That's all you need to do for the header section. All finished. So we can actually file save that. And then let's jump over into index. Well, I'm actually going to be trashing a vast majority of this information. And if you don't know, the index.php file is what is shown whenever somebody looks at your blog. Okay, so header is going to stay exactly the same. Now here, this is called the loop, and it basically loops through all the posts, and it prints out information on those posts on the screen. Well, I decided I don't want any of this stuff, so I'm just going to select it all and delete it all. So it's all gone. The only thing that's on here is get header, and what does get header do? It gets whatever is inside of header.php, which is what we created previously. So I'm going to go in here. Again, I'm going to scroll this guy up. So right where it says NTT Featured Content, because we have to print all this stuff out dynamically. Okay, and the first thing that I'm going to do here in this part right here is actually pull over the Featured Content plugin that we created in the previous tutorial. All the code that needs to show up for that. So I'm going to open this guy up, go to Index, come in right here, and I'm actually going to copy all of that. And this is going to go inside of there. And this is never going to change, it's always going to be exactly the same. And then this guy right here, what this is going to do is it's going to pull in the information for my right sidebar. And now I can get into actually creating all the stuff that you see on the right side of the screen. As you can see here, we're talking about the first sidebar, and this is going to handle all that information. In upcoming tutorials, I'm actually going to get into exactly what all that is. But if we scroll the whole way down here, this is where the actual content is. So I basically just have to copy and paste what's on the left side of the screen over to the right side of the screen. So what do I got to do? I got to create a div. I'm going to give it an ID. Use IDs whenever you only plan on there being one of these elements. You use classes when you expect there to be multiple versions of those elements. Well, there's only going to be one main content area, so I'm positive of that, so I'm just going to use that. Then I'm going to come in here and go div class is equal to featured posts, just like I have on the right side of the screen. That's all I'm doing here. Nothing fancy. And then I'm going to create an unordered list, and it's have a class equal to featured list. And then what I'm going to do, instead of using the normal loop system, I'm going to create a custom loop. I'm going to give myself some space here so you can see all this at one place. So we're just going to call PHP. Then I'm going to hijack what's called the WP Query object. And whenever you hijack this guy, you want to save its original contents in a temporary file so that you can copy it back later on. Because if you don't do this, you're not going to be able to issue more than one query on a page, and that's never good, because you almost always want to put a lot more in than that. Then I have to create a new WP query object, and this guy's going to allow me to query the WordPress database, and then I'm going to actually call it issue a query. And to do that, you just type this in, and then I'm going to say posts per page is going to be equal to 5. Let's jump over here just so you know what I'm doing. Okay, post per page is equal to five. Well, these are the posts that I want to print out here, right there on the screen. And then the next ones I print out, I want to print out four of them. Now, what I'm going to say here, again, this is a query to WordPress. I'm going to say that I also want the category name to be equal to featured. So anybody in the category featured, I want to print out the five posts from there, the most recent posts onto the screen. So that's what that query did. Well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a while loop, repeat query, as long as I have posts, I'm going to call WP Query. I'm going to say, give me the post. One of the five that are the most recent inside of the category name feature. So that's what that guy's going to do for me. Well, then what I'm going to do, as you can see here, there's LI. I've got to create all these guys. So I'm going to go LI, exactly the same. List item. Then I'm going to go H3. Class is equal to featured title, just like I have on the right side of the screen, just copying that code over there. Except here, because this is going to be dynamic, I need it to print out each of the information for each of these posts as they come up. So I make a PHP call here, and if I want a link to the original post, I call the function called the permalink, and it's going to output it on the screen. Then I close off the PHP section, just so I can put that in there for the HTML. And then I'm going to reopen PHP NTT, and I'm going to get the title for the post, store it in a variable. How you get the title for a post is go post, dash, and then that bracket inside of there, and call post title. That's going to shoot the post title out on the screen. And what I want to do is I want to echo 
I want to limit the length of the title because if they give me a great big giant long title, it's not going to show up right in the screen or on the screen. So I'm going to say I want to take the post title that this variable holds because it called this guy right here. And I want to output from the zero index character to the 28th character, limiting the size of the title that gets printed out the screen to keep things from getting all botched up. Put that, close off the A tag, close off H3. All right, so that's basically doing one thing. It's printing the title out the screen, and it's making sure it's not more than 28 characters in length. So then we jump over here. Now I need to get the featured excerpt, which is over here on the right side of the screen. So it's a paragraph, and it's class type. I'm using classes because there's going to be more than one NTT. And I want to call the excerpt. This is a variable again. What I'm doing here is I'm going to shorten the length of the excerpt so that it fits nicely in my little box. A lot of people do not understand that to develop WordPress themes, you don't really have to have great PHP skills, but you do need great HTML and CSS skills. That's definitely the most important thing. And I know everybody says they have great skills with CSS, but from what I've seen, I don't believe that's true. Actually, I think you could develop a WordPress theme without having any understanding at all of PHP by just copying and pasting the code that I use over and over and over again. And then I want to close off that. And we're doing exactly the same thing. We're just shrinking down the excerpt that's going to pop up on the screen. AH reference is equal to open PHP up again. And I want to get the permalink. This is the link to the actual post. And I call that function to be able to get it. Close off the PHP section. A little quote inside of there. Class is equal to click or more. Close that off. And that's just going to put the more tag there. And if they click it, it's going to take them to the original post. Close off the paragraph tag. Well, then what we got to do is we got to pull over the first image that they have inside of their post. So what I mean by that, this is all dynamic. All this information is being pulled in. So if I go to foreclosures fall, you can see right here, foreclosures fall. Well, what the code that I'm going to be messing with here is it's going to take this guy right here and it's going to shrink it down and put it right inside of there dynamically, which is kind of cool. So how am I going to do that? Type in echo catch that image and this is actually comes from a piece of doctored code I got from WP recipes except I changed it up quite a bit actually but I wanted to give them a shout out and then I want to shoot the title out here or assign that as an alt tag so the title name is going to be the alt tag for the image that's going to pop up there again it helps with SEO purposes because a lot of time people input images inside of WordPress and don't assign alt tags. Class is going to be equal to featured image because that's what I called it on the right side of the screen in the basic HTML CSS file. Okay, so created that guy. Why don't we go and create catch that image? And you do that over in functions. So functions.php. I'm going to come way down here to the bottom of the screen. And I'm just going to put a couple marks inside there. I'm, for this moment, I'm going to put some white space in here so you can see this better, but you never want white space after you close the PHP. That drives WordPress absolutely nuts. So I'm going to type in function, catch that image, get a hold of this post. So I'm going to be grabbing the first image that shows up in the post. First image is equal to, it's going to give it no value. Output is equal to preg match it's going to match for all image tags. This is just basic regular expressions. Again, this is copy and paste code. You don't need to memorize this or if it confuses you in any way, don't worry about it. Basically, this is looking for any single or double quotes that would follow image source. So that regular expression right there is going to grab the source for the, any of the images that show up in the first post. And then you have to pass it post dash post content and then the results are going to go into this array called matches go first image is going to be equal to remember matches is an array don't forget your dollar sign so i'm going to say i want the first result that's going to give me the first result the first image that shows up in that post and then i'm going to say if empty which means that they don't have any images inside of their post well i gotta protect against that and I'm going to create a default image. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to call blog info, call the template directory, and then I'm going to go first image is equal to, I'm going to say grab from the images folder, the image file called default ping, close off that if statement, and then I'm going to return first image, and then close off this function all together, and then remember to get rid of all of that white space. So let's jump back over into index again. So we got all that saved, got all that fixed. So now I'm going to close off this list item 
and then call some more PHP. I'm going to call end while because my while loops come to an end. And I've gotten all my posts that I need. Scroll this up again. So what do I want to do? I want to reset WP query back to null. And then I'm going to take what I stored in a temporary file for WP query and assign it back so that it'll be able to perform additional queries. And then close my unordered list and then close my div. In the next part of the tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off index.php and then I'm going to finish off of the footer section. Then we're going to move into the sidebar and all that other wonderful stuff. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.